All right, I admit it, I might have gone a bit menu crazy lately. So far, we've created both a main menu and a settings menu. So let's finish up by creating a pause menu as well. When we're done, it should look something like this. Also, special thanks to Judaman, Armin Narusi, and Infinity PBR for their support on Patreon. You guys are awesome. So let's get started. So here's the game that we want to create a pause menu on top of. I created this game for a Ludum Dare, and also made a video on it, which you can check out in the top right corner. So first, let's begin by creating a canvas. We'll go to the hierarchy, right click, go UI and select canvas. Let's make sure it's set to screen space overlay and let's select pixel perfect. Now if we go to the scene view, we should be able to switch into 2D mode, hit F to focus on our canvas. And now here we can place our UI elements. Let's right click on our canvas, go UI and create a panel. We want this to fill the entire screen, so that's perfect. But instead of making it white, let's make it a transparent black. If we switch into the game view, we can see that this can act as a nice base for the rest of our UI. We'll also change the source image from background to none. And this will get rid of the edges around our game view. Now we can rename this panel to pause menu and we'll put all of our UI inside of this object. So let's add some buttons to our pause menu. We'll right click, go UI, select button. Let's switch back into the scene view. Let's scale this while holding down Alt to scale it from the center. Now I want to go ahead and disable our image here and instead focus on the text. To do that, we'll go under the button and select our text object. And let's bump up the font size quite a bit. We can also change the text to something like resume and also make the text completely white. Now, if we have a look in our game view, that already looks better, but I also want to change the font style to bold. Whenever you're working with text on the UI, I recommend picking up Text Mesh Pro. It's a free asset on the Unity Asset Store and it was recently acquired by Unity. It makes everything to do with text much, much nicer. We're going to skip over it in this video, but if you want to learn more about Text Mesh Pro, I have a separate video on the topic and I also use it in the tutorial on creating a main menu. However, one thing that we can do with the default text is add a hard shadow. To do that, we'll hit add component, we'll search for shadow. We can keep the transparent black here, but we'd want to change the effect distance to something like four by minus four. That definitely makes our text more visible. We can then select our button, switch into the scene view and move it up a bit. And let's now rename this to resume button. If we go into the game view and hit play, we'll of course see that our game plays in the background, but we should now be able to click on our resume button. However, nothing seems to happen and we don't really get any visual feedback that anything is going on. That's because we disabled our image component. And by default, Unity shows what happens to a button under the transition by simply tinting the color of our image. So let's re-enable our image. Let's change the color to completely black. And then under the normal color, we'll set the alpha to zero. So by default, we won't be able to see this. However, if we then highlight our button, so if we hover over it, we'll bump up the alpha a bit. And if we then press the button, we'll bump up the alpha alpha even more. So now if we hit play, we should be able to hover over our button and it will visibly show that we're doing so. And when we press it, we can see that it turns even darker. You'll also see that if we stop hovering over our button, it's still selected. That's because we need to change the navigation to none. And that should fix it. I want to duplicate our resume button, move it down. And this one is going to be our menu button. So let's change the text to menu. I also want to make it smaller, so let's bump down the font size and let's then resize our button to fit it. We can now take this button, duplicate it, move it down, and this will be our quit button. So let's again change the text to quit. And I think that actually looks pretty nice. Let's rename our second button to menu button and our third button to quit button. And when we now play the game, we can select the different buttons. Now that we are satisfied with the UI of our menu, it's time to add a script to control it. To do that, let's start by disabling our pause menu. Let's then go to our canvas and let's hit add component. Here we'll create a script called pause menu. Let's go into new script, select C sharp and hit create an add. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. In here, we want to delete our start method. And instead, let's create a variable that will keep track of whether or not our game is currently paused. We'll make this a public static variable. Public because we want it to be accessible from other scripts. And static because we don't want to reference this specific pause menu script. We just want to be able to very easily check from other scripts whether or not the game is currently paused. So we'll write bool here because the value can be either true or false. Let's name it something like game is paused. By default, this will be false. Then inside of our update method, we can check whether or not we want to pause the game. And you can of course use any key that you would like for this. I'm just gonna use the escape key. So we'll write if input dot get key down. And again, the key that we want to check for is key code dot escape. 
if the game is currently paused, so if game is paused is equal to true, well then we've pressed escape while the game was already paused and so we want to now resume it. And if not, well then we've pressed the escape key while the game was not paused and so we want to go ahead and pause it. Now of course we need to create these two methods, so we'll create a void resume as well as a void pause. And what do we want to happen here? Well, when we are pausing the game, we want to bring up our pause menu, we want to freeze time in our game, and we want to change our game is paused variable to true. When we then resume it, we want to do all of those things but opposite. So bring down our pause menu, set time back to normal, and set game is paused to false. So let's do that. First to control our UI, we need a reference to it, so we'll create a public game object and we'll call it our pause menu UI. Then when we pause the game we'll go pause menu UI dot set active and here we can enable and disable our game object. We want to enable it so we'll set it to true. We then want to freeze time, we'll do that by writing time dot time scale and this is the speed at which time is passing. You can use this to create slow motion effects or quite simply just set it to zero in order to completely freeze the game. And finally we want to set game is paused to true. And again we want to do the exact same thing but opposite when we resume it. So pause menu UI dot set active and this time we want to disable it. So we'll write false. We want to set time dot time scale back to normal which is one so that speed passes at a normal rate and we'll set game is paused equal to false. And now we should see that if we save this and head into Unity we now have an empty slot for our pause menu UI. And here we'll drag in our pause menu UI that we just created. Now when we play, our game works as normal right until we press escape. The game freezes, our UI is brought up, you can still hear the music playing in the background. And we can now press on our different buttons, of course they currently don't do anything, but we'll fix that in a second. If we then press escape, our game returns to normal. So we can now effectively pause our game. And remember, we can always use game is paused to find out whether or not our game is currently paused. Say we wanted to do this inside of my audio manager. In here I could actually go ahead and pitch down sounds that plays when the game is paused. To do that I would simply write if, then we access the pause menu, dot, and here we have it, game is paused. And I can now use this to decrease the pitch of my audio source. Just to give you an example of why this is useful. But for now the main thing that we want to worry about is connecting up these buttons. To do that we want to create a function for each one. The resume button is easy, we simply want it to resume the game. And we do that right here, so we actually already have a function for that. All we need to do is go in and mark it as public and we can now trigger it from our button. We also need to create two more functions, of course they'll still be public. The first one will be called load menu and the second one quit game. And we'll write these out in a second, but for now let's just display something in the console. debug.log loading menu and here debug.log quitting game. Let's save this, go into Unity and let's try and select one of our buttons. This is the resume button. If we go ahead and scroll down, we can see that we have an on click event under our button. We'll add an action to this. So whenever this button is clicked, this action will be executed. Our action sits on the canvas. So we'll drag in our canvas. It's under the pause menu script and it's called resume. And we can do the same thing for our menu and quit button. Let's select our menu button, add an on click event. Let's drag in our canvas, go into pause menu and let's select load menu. And finally, let's hook up our quit button, add a new event, drag in our canvas, go and do pause menu and select quit game. And if we now were to hit play, pause the game, select menu, it's going to say loading menu, select quit, it's going to say quitting game. And if we hit resume, well, our game resumes. Awesome. So now we can make these two functions actually do something. In order to load our menu, we'll just need to go to the top here and use Unity Engine dot scene management and now we can access our scene manager in order to load a new scene and the scene that we want to load is the menu. I of course encourage you not to hard code it in like this and create a variable for it but I'm sure you can figure that out on your own. Then in terms of quitting the game we'll simply go application.quit 
And whenever we call this, nothing will happen inside the editor. So let's just leave our debug.log in here to let ourselves know what is going on. If we now save this script, go into Unity, we need to make sure that we have a scene called menu, which we do. And we also need to go to file, build settings, and make sure that we've added it to the scenes in build. Now, if I play this, hit escape and select menu, you can see that it loads up my main menu, but the game is still paused. Of course, we don't want this. So inside of our script, we need to also adjust time.timescale back to the normal one. Now we can save this again. And when we now try and go to the menu, we can see that working as normal. And we can actually drive around the menu. Yay! Finally, you might want to add a bit of animation when you pause the game. To do that, we'll go under animation. We'll create a new animation. I'm going to put it inside of my animation folder. And here I'm going to call it pause menu. And all that I'm going to do here is hit record, go forward a little bit and simply go into color and change the alpha to zero. Now you can see that as I scrub through time, our alpha decreases. Of course, we want to reverse this. So I'll simply take the keyframes and switch them. And now when we hit play, we can see our background fades in. It also currently loops to change this. We'll go and find the animation. Mine was named pause menu and here we'll make sure to disable loop time. And the last thing that we want to do is select our pause menu and under the animator, we want to change our update mode from normal to unskilled time. Otherwise, our animator will also be frozen by the fact that we change our time scale to zero. When we select unskilled time, our animator will just completely ignore our current time scale. So that's why we do that for UI stuff. We can then disable our pause menu, maximize our game, and our pause menu should now be complete. If I hit escape, our game pauses with a nice smooth transition. From here, I can quit the game, which will of course work if you build it. I can resume it and I can switch to the main menu. Awesome. That's pretty much it for this video. We're going to be taking a short break for Christmas Eve, but we'll be back in exactly one week with a video on how I started making games. It's a video that I'm really excited about, so I hope you guys will enjoy it. On that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November, and a special thanks to Judaman, Amin Arusi, Infinity PPR, Hans Hoftoon, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James P, Dan Evans, Thomas Wally, Superman the Great, John Burgard, Cole Cabral, Jason the Tito, Alex Kitsky, Manolis, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Rob Fairn, and Erasmus. You guys rock.